definitely recommend them. If you're into TT120, these are great for putting down the side of your new railway. Mm -hmm. it, you instantly end up with a lot of uh, play value from it. Welcome to another episode on JK2. The second Jenny Kirk channel. Hey. Absolutely. I'm Jenny Kirk and with me as always is... Zoe Kirk Robinson. AKA the Cupboard Monkey. Absolutely. Doing some monkeying around. And what monkeying around <laughs> are you going to be up to today? Well, first of all, I've been talking about TT120 for a fair amount of time on the Monday Club. You do like that, I don't do. You? And I've built some of the new Pico line of TT120 Scenic Editions for your TT120 Railway. These are actually really nice using a laser cut MDF. Yes. And um, the end results actually are really good. These are still yet to be fully painted. Yes, that's uh, going to be a different uh, video where I'm going to talk about how I paint them. Oh, right, it's a little sneak peek here. <laughs> but no, they come together really well. And I know I've built some of their laser cut MDF kits in Double O, and I've actually found them really easy to put together. How did you find these? incredibly good fun. It's one of those things where you can just sit down and a couple of hours, maybe an evening, you can put together a kit and it looks superb. There's a lot of detail in them as well. There's there the is, yeah. little end pieces, which are pieces that you just glue on and it looks like down pipes. The doors have texture on them. It's incredible. And it's just so well designed. And I, I have to say that the laser cut MDF is a really great medium for these sort of kits um, because you get all of the detail and they're incredibly precise when you're putting them together. Things just clunk click every trip and you end up with it building up into a, an incredibly strong uh, model oh, in absolutely. the end as well. This is, this is solid. Mm. And like I said, the level of detail, this internal detail inside the uh, bits, mm. you can see into there, it's got a lot of stuff going on. You could put lights in these and it would look really good. Absolutely. And um, the uh, low relief detail too, because mm -hmm. the laser cutting process, they don't actually have to cut all the way through with the lasers. Yeah. You can literally etch the brickwork uh, into the sides. And that gives it a texture, which uh, once you've painted it up, really does look so much better than a flat card kit would. Yes, I'm looking forward to doing the painting on these. But for the moment, what is here is very impressive even on its own. I've done a few little highlights here and there. I've actually done a cream wash over this as the base to try and bring out some of the detail. And a red wash on the top, which Jen says looks too continental. So I'm going to go for it with a blue yeah, and grey. The red roof, it needs to be a sort of dark, um, dark kind of grey, green, slate colour. Yeah. Um, although that does look like it would be um, like a tin roof on that one. Uh, uh, so I could do it more of a... Well, it would start more out as sort of a color. dark silver grey, which yeah. we, you could then streak rust down. Sounds, that sounds like a plan. So we'll try something like that. But to be honest with you, I have had a lot of fun putting these together. They come in a small uh, cardboard box, which is great, nicely recyclable. The instructions are incredibly clear. I actually built this one on the Monday Club, and the mm. only reason that uh, its chimney looks a bit weird is that I've put all of the bits at the top and then stuck the thing on the top, which I shouldn't have. That's the only thing that wasn't quite clear in the instructions about where these little bits of extra wood go. They actually go further down on the chimney to create this multi-layered effect, which I haven't gotten here. Oh, right. If there, yeah. if there was a criticism, that would be the only one. Mm. But I had a lot of fun building these. They were great. I was able to chat with people and enjoy the process while putting them together. It just works. And I am very impressed. Pico, you've done a great job. I mean, the process, you start out with, you have, um, literally just like a sheet of very, very thin MDF, uh, which is quite a controllable material. It's wood in origin, but they kind of reconstitute it. So you mm. get a very uniform grain. In fact, there actually, there isn't a grain either way with it. But by making these very thin sheets, they then cut it 
with a laser either all the way through or partially through which gives you the low relief detail and um, it, it gives you some very precisely cut out pieces yeah which because they're made of wood effectively has such a lot of strength to them they don't really bend they uh, even when you've got scale thickness they they do hold that strength and um, so they're particularly good for like the roof trusses you can see inside yeah. there as well oh yes um, it's something that in card would be quite flimsy, but with this I material... I have seen it in card before. Metcalf do a decent effect for it, but with wood, it just has that inherent uh, strength that makes it that little bit better. You've got more confidence putting it together, put it that way. Yeah, and when you look at the awning on this station oh building goodness, as yeah. well, you've got all of the gussets with all of the detail cut out, but it's fully load supporting. It yeah. doesn't sag, it doesn't bend, you don't get wibbly wobbly undulations in it. It just all comes together and holds its shape incredibly well. And like I say, it goes together so fast and it's just a lot of fun to make. Mm -hmm. So Jen, uh, I think I would like to see more from this range. How about you? Absolutely, and I know that one of the things that Pico do do is that um, they produce kits in N gauge, double O, O gauge, and now TT. Yeah. So it'd be nice to see a lot of these structures turning up in the other scales as well, and likewise some of the kits which are currently only available in say double O. It's quite an easy process because the way the CAD files are done mm -hmm. to upscale or downscale them. That. So uh, things like the Highland Railway signal box, which I've built um, exactly the same process, exactly the same material for Weir Yard, and I've got two of them now, and I really loved building those. And it might be nice to see those too appear in other scales and gauges. Absolutely. So yes, I definitely recommend them. If you're into TT120, these are great for putting down the side of your new railway. Mm. It, you instantly end up with a lot of uh, play value from it for a start. I know but perhaps that's not the word that uh, mm -hmm. modelers want to hear, but you know what I mean. You've and got it, it feels like there's something there for you to do with your railway. And one of the other things as well I like about them, because of their robustness, you can put them down and take them up. Um, yes. So literally, if you're just laying your layout out on a tabletop, these buildings you can keep safe in a plastic crate when not yeah. in use, and then put them down each time, and they will survive that kind of handling. Yeah, so it's well worth it. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us today. I know this is a quick one, but that's kind of what we're aiming for here on Jenny Kirk 2, or JK2 as Jen prefers to call it. I think I, I, it's, it sounds weird having my name in the title, so JK2. <laughs> okay, but what we're trying to do is something a bit shorter and a bit different to what you'd see on the main channel, looking at the gauges and scales that you don't often see and aren't quite as often talked about. But I think people should be talking about this more. I'm actually very impressed with TT120. Uh, I like to see what's going next, and I'm really impressed with what's out so far. Absolutely. Oh, anyway, we've just got left for me, Jenny Kirk, and Zoe Kirk Robinson to say you take great care of yourself. Don't forget to tickle that like button and share this video. Let other people know about what's coming out on the JK2 channel. And if you haven't already done so, then do please subscribe as well. And you can check us out down below on Patreon and help support us to keep making the videos that you want to see. And as always, We've got our full merch store, so everything from Billy's replacement t-shirts, there you Aha. go, through to the Gronk It Up hoodies and everything in between. You take care. Until next time, take care. Happy modelling. Bye for now. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon, but a special thanks go out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky 107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYMR ish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Popper, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, 
Jennifer Horton, Michael Rose, Trains with Nick, and Simon Snow. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.